Hey, congratulations on your wedding. I'm so happy for you. Um, I didn't, I didn't bring anything because, um, you know, I'm not going, but I just, like, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to provide you with the top five things that you should know about wedding gift, gift etiquette because I didn't know and you probably don't know. It was a shock to me to find this stuff out. And maybe you know more than I do and you can be a know-it-all and that's fine, that's on you. But I did not know this, so I'm happy to share this. So, let's start with number one. If you're invited to a wedding, regardless of if you go or not, bring a gift or send a gift. The reason being is just imagine what they were going through. Do I invite Aunt Sue? Do I invite my high school cheerleader best friend? Do I invite her boyfriend? Do I invite her ex? Because now they're fighting. So just as courtesy, send them a great gift. Not a pity, oh my god, I guess you invited me a gift. Unless you hate them, then don't send them anything so they don't call you anymore. I guess that's also an option. Okay, let's talk about the type of gift. Um, I think the number one best gift to provide is something that's personalized, something that only they are going to know about, but only they are going to relate to. Maybe that is they love mountain climbing, and so you give them uh, a branded <laughs> carabiner, right? Lavalier? I don't know what it's called. You know what I'm talking about. The hook. The hook that's going to keep them in love. Oh my god, I'm just so in love with you, I just want to be hooked on you forever. But something that's personalized, something that has their name on it, something that is meaningful to their relationship, maybe um, a collection of photos that, that are just about them. Oh my god, thank you so much for getting that for me. This is homemade. Hey listen, homemade things you'll remember forever. Think about it. I clicked when I winked. Um, something from their registry, obviously. So they have a registry, so pick something off of that registry and send them something from that. Or, alternatively, a gift card to one of the places from the registry is also fine. Like, they're totally going to be okay with that, because then they get to pick it themselves. Because, you know, the registry is too long, and then some people are idiots and buy the wrong thing, so then they get the registry gift card and they go, Oh, great, I can go get that thing at JCPenney that no one else got that I really, 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 really wanted. Um, let's talk about minimums. If you are under 25, you're excused to this. If you're over 25, you better be giving something at least $50, or $50 cash, or $35 on the registry. Like, you get an excuse if you buy an actual thing, because they might not know how much it is, even though it's on the registry, so they are going to know. But still, $25 minimum. Number five, last but not least, is to do something. You have to give something. Didn't I already say that? Oh, never mind. <laughs> I messed that up. What I meant to say was, number five, what about the destination wedding? Um, the destination wedding is the conundrum of anything. Okay, you're already paying to go travel to this, like, exotic place that they forced you to go to. You're going to a destination, and that's awesome, and some brides and grooms understand you're traveling, so they don't care, but don't make that an excuse. This is just my little tip. Get them something anyway, just as a, a nice little thank you for inviting them, even if it is something that's personalized and, and not something that costs a lot of money, just something that's meaningful from their heart, so that you're still giving them, because wouldn't you want that too? Wouldn't it be special to you if you got something that was handmade? from one of your friends who traveled all the way to Mexico for you, it would be nice. So, do that. Now here's the bonus part. I loved this tip I found online um, from The Knot. It was, what do you do whenever you are uber involved in the wedding? You are the baby shower. Uh-oh, hope there's not a baby shower for the wedding. The tip for if you're involved with the bachelor party, you're buying a dress um, for them, and you're involved in all the planning stages and you're in the wedding, well, how do you budget your money in that way? Here's what they suggest, which I thought was great. Decide how much you're gonna spend on them, period. So if that for you is $300, then 60% of that should be to the wedding gift, and then divide the rest of your money, divided by all these other activities you're gonna be buying. And so that way, you're gonna stay within budget, you're gonna feel good about it, you're still giving them a gift, you still feel good about giving them what you're gonna give. So if it's $600, 20% of that is 100, no, no, 60% is 
$360. So $360 is for the wedding gift. It, I don't know why you chose $600, but that's just the number that came to my mind. If you were going to spend $600, because I already figured out the math of this, um, then 60% of that would be $360. So that would be for the wedding gift. So then you take the other $240 and you divide that among everything else. So maybe it's $120 on the wedding shower and $120 on the bachelor party? Bachelorette party? Is that different? Whatever. Whatever. So, anyway, I hope this helps. I've created a blog that goes over this as well. So, check out the blog. Leave a comment if you want, because if I'd like to hear any other ideas you have or tips or things that you're like, uh-uh, that is just not true. No, I don't think so. You can't do that. All right. Well, have a wonderful day. See you soon.